Welcome back to Digital Charcuterie for another Marvel United Deep Dive. I'm Andrew Fantasia. Thanks for tuning in today. Click the bell and like stuff if that's your cup of tea, or rather if this is your cup of tea. And if fantasy is your cup of tea, then don't forget to check out my fantasy novels, We Were Wizards. You can get them on Amazon right now. And guess what? There's two of them. There's the gray one and the purple one. Purple one comes first. Gray one is the next one in the series. Even though it's book one and book 11, I did that on purpose. I'm sorry it's confusing, but I promise it's not confusing once you read them. We Were Wizards is my fantasy novel saga, and they're a lot of fun. Trust me. There's magic, there's elves, there's dwarves, there's even some giant monsters, if that's your sort of thing. You can get them on Amazon. I'll put the link in the description below. You know, when Doc Brown and Marty McFly ended up in an alternate history version of 1985 where everything's really dark and Biff Tannen rules the world, more or less, one thing it was missing was giant freaking robots. Come to think of it, it wasn't missing at all. I'm glad there were no giant robots in Back to the Future Part 2. But giant freaking robots are a staple of dystopian science fiction, particularly the very famous X-Men story, Days of Future Past. And that's what today's expansion is all about. Days of Future Past uh, is a big, different expansion. It's unlike anything that you've seen before. Uh, and it shocked people, I'm sure, when it was announced during the Season 2 Kickstarter campaign just because of what it brought to the table. Speaking of bringing things to the table, let me bring you to the table and let's take a look at what's in that box. Wow, what a big, chunky expansion box. And it kind of has to be because of what's inside. Thanks again to my friend the Meeple Monkey, by the way, for helping me get a hold of this because it was hard to find. So thanks again, buddy. I really appreciate it. Now we can take a look at what's inside of this gorgeous box. And let me tell you right off the bat, as a kid who grew up with this cartoon, those Sentinels are a big deal. No pun intended. So to have Sentinels in the game is a special feeling. So we'll just flip that over to the back and take a look inside. Let's set that down. I think a special shout out deserves to go to whoever works at Marvel Comics and decided to name Nimrod. Uh, it's almost as good a, a name as Chode. So as we open this up, we can see inside here, Project Nimrod. They're welcoming us to Project Nimrod. This expansion brings the daunting fight against the gigantic Sentinels and the highly advanced Nimrod. In this unique game mode, the heroes will need to first take out the Sentinels, whose activation protocol immediately reacts to everything they do, to then face off against Nimrod. The longer they take, the stronger Nimrod becomes. To aid them in this fight, players can rely on Logan, the middle-aged Wolverine from this alternate future. Players can also add the challenge of any of the Sentinels to their other games, setting a relentless hunter on their tail to make things much more dangerous. Wow. And this is not just a leaflet, folks. There's a lot of rules to these Sentinels. So you get a full four page, well, three pages, because there's a cover page. But you get a full three pages of delicious new rules to add to the United system. It's... Uh, a beautiful thing whenever you get new rules and new things because it just tweaks things ever so slightly and that tells you how Nimrod works and how the Sentinel challenge works which we'll go over and then the Sentinel protocol and all that fun stuff. So let me set that aside there and right away you see another of our big oversized dashboards. This is the Days of Future Past Sentinels and Nimrod dashboard and it's gorgeous. Look at this thing. All the Sentinel stuff happens up here, and then once the Sentinels are clear, all the Nimrod stuff takes place. And you have to defeat Nimrod as fast as you can, but he's got this big track, and the more far along the track he is, the more damage he's going to do. I don't think I have beaten Nimrod. I might have beaten him once, but it was not an easy fight. Um, I'm pretty sure it's either I beat him once or I beat him never. And then inside here, we have this little plastic tray that's dividing everything and I will say this is probably the only time that Simon has ever forgotten uh, at least in this in Marvel United uh, it's the only time they've forgotten to add some kind of thing some kind of slot where you can stick your finger to get these cards out it doesn't exist to get the cards out the only way I can really do it is to just kind of open it and flip it like that that's all I got that's the only way it'll happen so in this deck of cards that come inside, you will have your one hero deck, which belongs to Mr. Logan. Uh, and it's a beautiful thing. It's got brown on it because he's wearing a brown jacket. 
This is pure Logan goodness right there. Wonderful. Uh, and then you have your villain deck, which is Nimrod. And there is Nimrod and the Sentinels. The Sentinels don't actually have their own cards because that's how they roll. But you've got a master plan deck for Nimrod. And boy, is he mean. There are his threat cards there as well. So he's got a lot of threats. And I think these threats stay on, uh, or they, rather they go on even when the Sentinels are there. Uh, and then you have your activation protocol for the Sentinels. And every, these are all the same. Every player gets one so that, because there's a lot of rules to the Sentinels. So they essentially give you this as a just rules cheat sheet and it's double-sided. It shows exactly how the Sentinels work and what you're supposed to do. More complicated than you would think the Sentinels would be, but that's why they just give you four of these so that all the players can have access to it at any time. And then the last set of cards in here is the Sentinel Challenges. And there's three of them. There's three challenges in this box. Sentinel 1, Sentinel 2, and Sentinel 3. And they all do slightly different things, particularly when there's a wild that's played. That's the biggest difference. Um, when you play a wild with Sentinel 1, it heals. When you play a wild with Sentinel 2, it flips hero cards. When you play a wild with Sentinel 3, uh, because Sentinel 3 is the one that uh, I think has its hand out and is able to do so, it actually grabs a hero. And if it's already holding a hero, it deals one damage. So that's really cool. And it's the strongest of the three. So you don't just get one challenge. You get three challenges, which is really something. And then inside are tokens, these big oversized tokens for the Sentinels. And what you do is you shuffle these up and you give one to each uh, player. Even if there's four players, you only give one to three players. Um, and then they flip it over and you get Sentinel one or two or three. And whatever Sentinel you get, that's who is tracking you. So that's kind of neat. And then all that's left is the miniatures. So, I mean, these are great miniatures, right? Uh, it, it's no surprise that this is going to be a, a special box. So let's start with Logan, who is the least impressive miniature in this box, because he's just a normal hero. But there he is. He's got his jacket. He's got his claws, his wild mane of hair. He's standing on some rocks. Great looking Logan. Very Hugh Jackman-y in the way he's standing, too. Hugh Jackman would stand like that a lot. But wonderful little mini. And that just tucks right in there like so. Next, we have a special miniature right here. Mr. Nimrod is a very special one because he comes with some translucent white at the base of his miniature. And Nimrod is a very strange character. He's made of, like, I think he's made of liquid metal, like the T-1000. I might be wrong in that, but I could swear I remember him doing liquid metal stuff in the cartoon. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, and he's standing on this cool base with this giant rush. Whoop, there we go. This giant rush of air underneath him. I have no idea what that's about, but it just looks neat. And, I mean, he's Nimrod. What more can you say? Nobody looks quite like him. He's a very unique sentinel. And then, speaking of sentinels, here they are in all their glory. Uh, I'm going to take this guy out first, because he's kind of on top of the other one. Oh, and lo and behold, he's number one. There you go. So there is Sentinel number one, and they're big, they're chunky, they're heavy. They just feel right. They don't feel cheap. Uh, and man, they have some heft to them. And when they're on the table, and you're just moving one, you know, one space, and you're just like, okay, move the Sentinel, and you go, you feel the weight of that. There's something so tactile about that, of just having having them traverse the map in a slow plotting way that feels very uh, apt for the kind of characters these are. But it's a sentinel at the end of the day, and they look just like they did in the cartoon, so that makes me happy. Look how detailed they are at the back, too. There's a lot of gears and things going on there. This ain't no cheap, mass-produced little sentinel thing there's there's some dedication that's happening here so that is sentinel number one i don't remember what number this guy is but we'll take him out next did i do this in numerical order i did he's sentinel number two all right groovy that's sentinel number two sentinel number two looks like he's um striking a pose like he's showing off you can win a brand new car huh uh that's <laughs> that's the vibe i get from him he looks fantastic though he's saying stop mutant and he is terrifying. He's just as terrifying as his buddy with those outstretched hands. You know, they shoot lasers and stuff out of those hands and like grappling hooks. They shoot a lot of stuff. 
Lots of beams and things come out of the Sentinels on a regular basis. Now, there he is. There is Sentinel number two. And again, great table presence on that guy. And then finally, and I want to be careful with Sentinel number three, because um, the shipping, when he arrived, uh, his arm was broken. And I have since Gorilla glued it back on. And so far, touch wood, it's been holding up great. But I really have to be careful. Um, so this is Sentinel number three. You can see little three there. And he is the one that can grab you. You can put a hero in here. And again, I want to be real careful because I don't want to put unnecessary weight on that hand. But yeah, there you go. You can grab heroes. Isn't that cool? That would be fun to have that mechanic happening there. Uh, just be careful because that arm can get real fragile. So Gorilla Glue is doing the trick so far. And there he is, Sentinel number three with a big wheel on his butt and a bunch of gears ready to join his friends. And he's got like a punch ready too. He's ready to really take somebody on. These are magnificent miniatures. They're the perfect color. They're an off maroon because they're not quite villains or anti-heroes. They're just there uh, as a challenge. Uh, that's the sort of challenge color of Marvel United, I guess. Just like Deadpool and Carnage. Carnage was also done this way. I wonder if we'll get any more in the future. I don't think DC had anything like that. But that is what you'll find in the box for Days of Future Past. It's a lot, and at the same time, it's not a lot, right? Uh, and as we go over the um, the points, you'll see exactly what I mean by that. But it is a box that is worth more points than I would have initially guessed. Part of that is due to the fact that I didn't realize until very recently, but these are three very separate different challenges. I just thought that they pertained to which miniature you use. But no, they're different. They do different things. And that is going to add some serious points and by serious i mean you know two extra points to this box but hey two points can make a whole world of difference uh, because there's not a whole lot of space in here i actually don't keep anything different in this box everything that you see here is everything that comes here and that's the ball game so now why don't we go find out together how many points of worthiness days of future past will give you all right, now that we've taken that deep dive together, let's tally up how many points you can get from Days of Future Past. And when we finish tallying up the numbers for Days of Future Past, I've got a little surprise for everyone. The box contains one regular mini, being Logan. That's one point. Then it has three Sentinels and Nimrod, all of whom are special miniatures because they're either oversized or they have some translucent effects. Special minis are worth two points, and there's four of them, so that gives us eight Hmm, love it. You got one hero in the box, and even though you have all those villainous miniatures, the Nimrod Sentinel fight is just one villain at the end of the day. Then you have something interesting. You have, for the first time ever, multiple challenges in a box. This is the first time that's happened. It's also our first oversized box. This box is a total pioneer, I'm telling you. So because you get not one, not two, but three different Sentinel challenges, the challenges total up to three points. Three plus two plus one plus one plus eight equals a nice, sexy... 15 points. This was a box that I slept on at first. I, I didn't get it because I was trying to save money. And then the more I looked at it, the more I was like, oh, it'd be so nice to have those Sentinels and, and, and get that part of the Marvel Night experience. And lo and behold, now I can. Thanks again, Meeple Monkey. Uh, and so for all of you, I would say if you grew up with the cartoons like I did, you're going to feel like you're missing something if you don't get this box, even though it's only got one villain in it. And I know for a lot of people, having as many villains as possible is what's going to tip the scales in a box's favor. I get that. That's how I am too. That's why I initially bulked on this, because I was like, that's great, but it's expensive because it's big miniatures and you're still only getting one villain. So that's why I flip-flopped. But uh, at the end of the day, for X-Men fans, for X-Men animated series fans, damn, is it ever worth it. All right. Before we say goodbye today, it's time for my little surprise. As I mentioned, this was a box that I initially did not opt in for, and I got it after the fact. Well, there were a couple other boxes that suffered the same fate, and to this day, I still don't own them. Those two boxes are the Phoenix Five and the Horseman of the Apocalypse. Well, 
Even though I don't own them, and I can't physically show you what's in the box, I can tell you how many points each one is worth. I have done my research, looked at exactly what each box comes with, and now I can confidently tell you the number of points you're getting. And let me tell you, when I did this research, I actually was shocked with what I learned. Okay, let's take a look, starting with the Horseman of Apocalypse. This is a box I spend a lot of time looking for on the aftermarket, but it's just way too expensive and it's not worth it because at the end of the day, you are only getting an anti-hero and a villain in it. And it's cool because it's Apocalypse and he's a big deal, but at the same time, he's my least favorite X-Men villain and the price, you know, the, the juice doesn't justify the squeeze for me at least. If I ever see it for cheaper, I will definitely pick it up because it would be nice to add Apocalypse to the collection. But for now, let's take a look at what you get in this box and see if it's maybe right for you. The Horseman of Apocalypse box contains five miniatures. That's five points. It has one villain, the Horseman of Apocalypse themselves, and one anti-hero, Apocalypse. And anti-heroes are worth three. Then there are two locations in the box, and that means you get one point, because they're worth half a point each. And finally, you have a new game mode, the Horseman of Apocalypse mode, which lets you play against all the horsemen, and then that dictates how you battle Apocalypse. Kind of like what we got with the Infinity Gauntlet. So that's worth two points. Five plus two plus three plus one plus two equals 13 points of worthiness. Now... Let's take a look at the other box, the box that I was least interested in out of all of them, the Phoenix Five. And here's where things get real interesting. The Phoenix Five expansion contains five regular miniatures, Hope Summers, Evil Cyclops, Evil Colossus, Evil Emma Frost, and Evil Magic. Then it contains one special miniature, Evil Namor. He's got some water on him because it's Namor, man. That's he, he swims. That's his thing. There's only one hero in the box. That's Hope Summer, so that's one point. Then, this is where things got really cool, and I cannot believe I didn't know this before. The box doesn't contain one villain. I thought it did. I thought it just contained the Phoenix Five mode. It contains five separate villain options. This floored me. Each member of the Phoenix Five can be faced as an individual villain if you just add a couple of random extra BAMs to them. The way the Phoenix Five works is every member has a BAM uh, that is significantly weaker than a normal BAM, but once you start stacking them up, they get more and more powerful. So you could theoretically, if you play like I do, you could add each of these Phoenix Five members to your list of villains, and then if you end up randomly picking, say, Phoenix Cyclops, then you just add a couple of the other ones to his BAM, so he's got three BAM powers, and boom, you have a villain. That means the amount of playability you can get out of this box. I thought this was the weakest box that there was in all of Marvel United. Turns out, not the case. Because five villains, which is what you get, equals ten points right there just for the villainy, and then, on top of it all, is the Phoenix Five mode itself, which is a gameplay mode just like Infinity Gauntlet, just like a Horseman of Apocalypse, and modes are worth two points. That gives us five, plus two, plus one, plus ten, plus another two, twenty points of worthiness in this tiny little expansion that I underestimated so much. Guys, I can't believe how much I've been sleeping on Phoenix Five. And again, that's another one where the aftermarket is just skyrocketing on it. So I don't think I'm going to be getting my hands on it anytime soon. But the idea of being able to add to my list of villains, to being able to add Phoenix Cyclops, Phoenix Magic, Phoenix Colossus, Phoenix Namor, and Phoenix Emma Frost. Five new additions to my villain list in just one little box? That's nuts. That is wonderful. And the fact that I have been completely turning my nose up at this expansion. I feel terrible. This is absolutely worth the price. Um, I mean, if we look at just what we've covered today, it's worth more in our point system anyway than Days of Future Past or Horsemen of Apocalypse.
So it just goes to show, you gotta look closer. Sometimes you can't judge a board game by its cover art, even though the cover art on these games is fantastic. But yeah, guys, Phoenix 5, do not sleep on it. If you can get your hands on it for a good price, do it. I mean, they're not the most exciting villains. I'm sure we'd all rather fight, you know, Dr. Octopus and Red Skull than we would Phoenix Colossus. But just based on the way I play, having five more villains in that roster, damn, that's fun. And you get Hope Summers. You get another hero. So there you have it. Three expansions in one video. That's what I call a b -b bonus, my friends. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of a Marvel United Deep Dive on Digital Charcuterie. I will see you here next time as we look at the Gold Team expansion. Blue and gold have some mighty fine things going on underneath the hood. We're going to start with gold. So see you next week for Gold Team on Digital Charcuterie as we continue to make the wait for DC Superheroes United a little bit shorter and a whole lot sweeter. See you next time.